In today's episode, we'll cover the pros and cons of the five podcast recording software options that we recommend the most. Welcome to Podcasting Q&A, where you learn the best tips and strategies to launch, grow, and monetize your show. This week's question comes from Norman. Hey there, Buzzsprout. This is Norman Chella, the podcast rainmaker and host of Antifool. I'm producing six of my own shows, and I'm currently using Audition, which is great, but always trying out new tools like Descript to add to my workflow. What are your thoughts on editing software that isn't really conventional, like Descript being text-based? And are there any other tools that we should be considering? Always happy to try them out. Thanks. Thank you so much for your question, Norman. Now, in the past several years, as podcasting has really started to pick up some steam, there have been some really cool audio editing softwares and companies that have started coming out. Now, some of them lean more towards the pro level audio editing side where they're giving you all the bells and whistles that you need as a podcaster without introducing a ton of complexity into your editing workflow. And then on the other side, there are some companies that have come out with some really innovative solutions that are perfect for people that are just getting to podcasting that aren't interested in learning a software like Adobe Audition. So in this episode, I'm gonna break down the pros and the cons of the five audio editing softwares that we use, that we recommend here at Buzzsprout, and then also tell you which one would be best for you. The first audio editing software that we recommend at Buzzsprout is Audacity. And it's probably for the same reasons that it is the most popular podcast editing platform in the world. The first pro being it's free. So you don't have to pay anything to start using it. You just download it directly from Audacity's website and you start going to town. The other reason we really like Audacity, it has a lot of editing capabilities built right into it. You can apply normalization effects. You can apply compressor effects. You can do EQ settings. You can do fades and crossfades. All of the editing techniques and strategies that you learn in your podcasting journey, Audacity can do it. However, Audacity does tend to be a bit buggy, especially when it comes to software updates. Recently, Apple updated their operating system to Catalina and it broke Audacity. If you used Audacity to edit your podcast episodes, you could not do that in Catalina. And it took a while for Audacity to create a software patch that would restore that capability to all of their Mac users. The other thing to be aware of with Audacity is that it does what's called destructive editing. So if you cut out a piece of your audio and then you save the file, you can't get that audio back. So who is Audacity best for? Well, it's best for podcasters on a budget that still want the full suite of audio editing options. If that is you and you edit on a Windows or a Mac computer, go with Audacity. The second software option on our list is GarageBand. GarageBand comes pre-installed on just about every Apple device that you can imagine, whether it's a MacBook, an iMac, iPad, iPhone, all the i things, GarageBand comes pre-installed. So some of the pros, it's free, so you don't have to buy it, and it's pretty easy to use, especially when you start comparing it to Audacity, which has a lot of capabilities built into it, but it can take a while to learn how to use the software. GarageBand's a lot more intuitive, a lot more easy to understand. Now, one thing that you need to be mindful of when you're editing in GarageBand is that it has very limited export capabilities. So a lot of audio editing software, when you export your project to make your final MP3 or WAV file, you have a bunch of fields that you can fill out. You have a bunch of things that you can customize to make sure that your file turns out exactly the way that you want it. GarageBand, does not. The other thing that GarageBand cannot do is set the loudness level. So if you want to set your podcast episodes to the industry standard of negative 16 LUFs for stereo files and negative 19 LUFs for mono files, GarageBand can't do that. So you're going to have to use a second piece of software in order to set that loudness for your podcast episodes. But who is GarageBand for? Well, it's for Mac users that are just getting into podcasting and they want something that's easy to use that they don't have to spend any money on. The third software on our list is Alitu. Alitu is an internet-based recording and editing software that works on any device. And what's really cool about Alitu is that they have done their very best to speed up the editing process as much as possible. And you'll notice this once you start editing inside of Alitu. You can bring in your intro and your outro into every single episode. You don't have to add it every single time. You save it once, Alitu brings it in. 
when you import audio files, whether it's an interview file or a narration file or background music, it will automatically do some mixing and mastering to that. And then at the end of the edit, once you're done, you can publish directly into podcast hosting companies like Buzzsprout. So removing the step of having to export the file, download it to your computer, log into your podcast host, upload the file, it removes all those steps. And when you're doing that every single week, that time starts to add up. Now, one drawback of Alitu is that you are kind of limited in the mixing and mastering that you can do because so much of the process is automated to really simplify the workflow. That just gives you less toggles that you can adjust. And so if that is something that you are really passionate about doing, then don't use Alitu. But if you are a busy podcaster that's always looking for ways to speed up your workflow without sacrificing your audio quality, Alitu is a great solution. And if you're a Buzzsprout podcaster, make sure you check the resources section in your Buzzsprout dashboard where you can get 50% off your first three months of Alitu. The fourth audio editing software that we recommend is Hindenburg Journalist Pro. It's the one that I use to edit all of our podcasts here at Buzzsprout. And the reason is that it is everything that you need in a professional level audio editing software without the complexity that you don't. If you've ever looked at Adobe Audition and just immediately felt overwhelmed and confused about what to do or how to do it, you are not alone. Welcome to the club. Hindenburg has a lot of those same level features that you're gonna get in a software like Audition or even Logic Pro X, but it's a lot more intuitive. I can blaze through a podcast edit in Hindenburg Journalist Pro so much faster than I can in any other audio editing software simply because of how intuitive it is and how simple the tools and the effects are to use. And like with Alitu, you can publish directly from Hindenburg Journalist Pro into your Buzzsprout account, saving you 10 to 15 minutes, depending on your internet upload and download speeds, and all those extra steps that really do add up over time. The only drawback to Hindenburg Journalist Pro is that it is an investment. Audacity is free, GarageBand is free, Alitu is really affordable. Hindenburg Journalist Pro is priced as a pro-level audio editing software. But if you are committed to podcasting for the long haul, and you know that over the months and the years, these little time savings that you get from using a software like Hindenburg Journalist Pro is gonna be worth it to you, I would highly encourage you to go for it. If you're a Buzzsprout podcaster, you can get 90 days for free. Just go to your Buzzsprout account, go to the resources section, and you can get a coupon for a 90 day free trial to test it out for yourself. And then the final recording software that we have started recommending recently is Descript. And what's really unique about Descript is that rather than bringing in the audio file, looking at the waveforms of, you know, that are populated based on your audio, and then editing that, Descript creates a transcript. When you go to edit your podcast episode, you can either edit it using the waveform in the timeline, or you can just edit the transcript and it will make those changes to the audio underneath. Some of my favorite features from Descript are being able to edit the transcript and knowing that it's going to edit the audio underneath it. Features like overdub, which allowed you to fix mistakes, things that you didn't say that you wish that you said or that you said incorrectly without having to go back and re-record the microphone. And then even things like automatically removing filler words. Those are huge time savers. Now, the only thing that I will say about the script is that when you edit the transcript, it often doesn't give you exactly what you want in the audio because it is interpreting the audio waveform. It is trying to make some decisions for you, but sometimes that doesn't actually sound the way that you want it to. So you will need to go back, listen to it all the way through once you make all your edits to make sure that it, it is gonna turn out and sound the way that you want it to. And that's just an extra step that you have to do with the script that you wouldn't have to if you were editing purely based on the waveform. But if you're new to podcasting and the idea of learning an audio editing software is kind of daunting, but you've been writing five paragraph essays for your entire life, Descript is a really great software option. And in fact, we're doing a special giveaway right here, right now in this episode. So if you want to win a year of Descript, all you have to do is leave a comment below the YouTube video, letting us know how you think Descript would help your podcast editing workflow. And next Monday, we will choose a winner and give you a free year of Descript. Thank you so much for sending us your question, Norman. Now, if you have a question that you want us to answer on a future episode, all you have to do is go to speakpipe.com slash buzzsprout or click the link in the show notes and leave us a brief audio message. Make sure to subscribe to the Buzzsprout YouTube channel to get future episodes of the show as they come out. Or if you're listening to this in your podcast app, make sure you hit subscribe so you get those new episodes automatically every week. 
Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening. And as always, keep podcasting.